حضرت علامہ امام عاصم دامت بارکت العالیہ وہ آپ سے جو ہے وہ خطاب فرمائیں گے حضرت علامہ امام عاصم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ ماشاءاللہ I am truly amazed at the turnout uh, in this masjid in Bedford Street in Warsaw uh, of so many young brothers uh, to come and listen to uh, a nobody like myself's talk. But I was very sad to hear as soon as I got out of my car that one of the brothers who made this talk possible today, young brother Abdil Haider, and Marhum, may Allah have mercy on him, passed away on October the 10th, whilst he was at the gym. And he was 17 years old, and I believe that it is not me who has brought you people together. It was this young boy who brought us together. And this is his miracle. This is his karamat. This is his miracle that he's managed to get so many youth from Warsaw and its surrounding areas to come into the masjid tonight. Because he went out he was putting posters up, he was giving flyers out, he was on Facebook advertising it, etc. He was doing a, a grand job. He was doing a great job in spreading the word. And Allah accepted his efforts. And he was also becoming a half of the Quran. He had done three juz of the Qur'an by heart, memorized. It's a great thing and inshallah those three juz will be nur for him in his grave. And for every letter that he memorized and read, Allah Almighty is going to elevate his ranks in paradise. The topic is end of times. To be honest, I've done this speech so many times. I've done hundreds of times I've spoke about the end of times. And you can go to YouTube and you can type uh, my name in um, End of Times, the Jal Imam Mahdi, and you'll find my talks on that. So I, I didn't want to speak about the end of times today, in all honesty. The brothers did give the subject, but maybe more, many of you did come to listen to that subject, so I will touch on it a little bit. Like the respected Imam Sahib of the Masjid mentioned, we are going through Muharram al-Haram and this was the month in which the grandson of the Prophet ﷺ was martyred. So I'd like to talk about Sayyidina Imam Hussein. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Because many young people, young lads, boys, lads, who are here, they don't know who he is. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I would like for them to go away knowing who Imam Hussein was. So inshallah I'm going to be talking about Sayyidina Imam Hussein. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So many young people are here. Imam Sahib very beautifully and so politely welcomed myself forward. And they mentioned that this is a person who is doing a lot of work in this country. And they describe it as a lot of work coming from subcontinent, etc. And I thought Imam Sahib was going to take somebody else's name. I didn't want Imam Sahib to take my name because I'm doing nothing at all. I'm doing nothing honestly. What am I doing? or travel to one mosque to another mosque, a few people would sit, listen to my talks. I'm weak myself. I have 110 floors inside me. I'm like everyone else. But when they described 
or put this description forward in Urdu. I thought in my mind, one person who fits this description that is attached and connected to me and who has made me who I am today. Aside from my mother, who has put a lot of attention into my life to make me a speaker and a good Muslim and try to be a good Muslim. Aside from my mother, an individual who's come from Pakistan to this country and been well, that is my honorable Ustad. Hazrat Mufassir Quran. Hazrat Kibla Prizada in Dad Hussein Sah. Dhamad Barkat of Mul Qudsiya. And I thought Imam Sah was going to take their name. Because they are most befitting to those accolades and descriptions that Imam Sah gave. I am not fitting to that description. I am just an adna, adna, naqis, very weak, very low student, adna, naqis, khadim of my asatiza, and ultimately khadim of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's all I am. This tawsif that Qibla Imam Sahib gave, this is tawsif for my Ustaz Akira. As the Qibla Pizara and the Hussein Sahib, Dhamat Barakhat Muhammad Qudsi. So I wanted to clarify that to you. I'm not uh, worthy of that description. It's not me. Me is me here, right now. This is me. I turn up in my car. Most of the time I'm on my own. I have few people with me. If not, my brother, my cousin, and khalas. We come do our job and we go. We don't do nothing. That's it. That's, that's me. This is me. Asim, Imam Asim, Ayman, whatever you want to call me, that's up to you, I'm not bothered. This is who I am. I'm a simple guy trying to do a bit of work. I make dua, Allah accepts this from us. And Allah Ta'ala certainly accepted this from Brother Akeem. Allah accepted this from him before he passed away that today hundreds and hundreds of young people are in this masjid. And you should be very proud as elders, very happy as elders, that today is not Jum'ah, and you've got young people in. Because you only get them in on Jum'ah. And even then they sit right at the back. True? Of course it's true. Whether you agree with me or not, I'm telling you. I'm Khatim of a masjid, central masjid in Manchester. I see it myself. All the bazooks sit in front of me. And Bajari just about understand my language, English. And the ones who I want to talk to, they'll be right at the back and they come five minutes before I finish. So, the Bazurgs, the elders, should be very happy that today the children are in the masjid. It's a very big thing, mashallah. It's not Laylatul Qadr, it's not Jum'ah, it's not Shabi Bara'ad, it's not Laylatul Mi'raj, it's all young people who have come to remember Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to make this as Isa Alayhi Salaam for young brother Akir al Mahum who passed away. That's why they are all here. So, I'm very happy to see the boys in the restroom. Very happy. If this is our life's mission to bring young people to the house of Allah. Whether we are worthy of doing that is another story. But if one person goes away today inspired, educated, reformed, wanting to change, then please don't forget me on the day of Qiyamah. Don't forget those who have made this possible on the day of judgment as well. Say, Ya Allah, we was inspired, etc., by this person's talk, etc., whatever it may be. And then if you go to Jannah, grant me with you. Whether it's by my beard, by my toes, by my ears, whatever you do, just drag me with you to Jannah, please. Because I don't know if I will go. Only Allah knows best. We live in hope. We live in hope and we also live in fear of Allah's punishments. We make dua that Allah gives us tawfiq to understand the deen act upon the deen as well. May Allah Ta'ala give me tawfiq to speak the truth. Allah Ta'ala give you all tawfiq to listen to the truth. Ultimately tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing I've never done this before. I don't do this. I said to Hafsab Nadeem Sahib, Yeah Hafsab you come and do this for me. But Hafsab is gone and sat in his place. So I'm going to take a picture of all you young people and I'm going to put it on my Facebook. 
that today I went to Warsaw and they made me very happy. And he didn't get my point, but I get my point. So I'm going to take a picture quickly, excuse me for this. I'm going to take one picture of all of you guys here. You can smile, you can be cheese, whatever you want to do. There's no problem with the issues, it's going to be sir. It's got into this. Oh, Very good. I want to take one picture. Half of the team was sleeping, so I will do it myself. Of all you young people. I went to a masjid where it was full of youngsters. MashaAllah. Ahl Sunnah is alive. Islam is alive. Our youth are alive. They're not dead. They just need to wake up. They're asleep. That's all it is. Our boys are asleep for it. They're just chilling, enjoying life. They just need to wake up and they'll be okay. Trust me. That's all our youth need. They read the kalima, they read namaz when they can, they do good. All they need is a wake-up call. When that wake-up call comes, boy, they'll change. Don't worry. People say, oh, Imam Sabu, do for my young son, my young daughter. I say, it's that age. They're at that age where they want to change. I'm not going into reasons of why they are like this, but they are at this age. In time, Allah will bring them back. <coughs> and I hope it's not too late. Don't leave it too late. You've got a chance. Today we're here because a 17 year old passed away. 17 years old, brother. 17, nothing. Absolutely nothing. 17 is what? What has he seen in life at the age of 17, brother? Tell me. He just about got out of school, probably was going to college or a sixth form, becoming the half of the Quran, simple young boy, 17, and Allah had written he's going to pass away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We came from Allah, we will go back to Allah. So it's very, very sad, and learn from this. Life's short, brothers, very, very, very short. My speech, I meant to be in Bradford, but I'm going to cancel Bradford. I don't think I'll make a Bradford in time. I'm going to do a speech now. And I'm in the mood of doing a good speech. I'm in the mood because there's young people, it's a good opportunity to give them a message. So if after one hour you are tired or bored, go home. Don't stay. Nobody is forcing you to stay. But if you are interested and want to listen, keep sitting and listening. That does not mean I'm going to speak for four hours, five hours, no. Maximum, maximum, hopefully, one hour, 30 minutes. If at the top, two hours. And I'm saying that because the young boy said, you've got two hours to speak. <laughs> so no problem. And Imam Hussein, two hours is not enough for him. It's not enough to Two hours is not enough. It's too little time to say that Imam Hussein. I went to South Africa for 13 days. I come back on Friday before Jum'ah, then I went straight to Jum'ah. And the people out there, I narrated the full story of Karbala. From A to Z, in five hours, over three nights. And people sat and listened. Very emotional story, very sad story. And I will touch on this a little bit today as well. But Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, time is limited to praise him, radiallahu anhu. There's so much to say, two hours is not enough. Five hours, ten hours, I say, Adar, we was to spend our entire lifetime praising Imam Hussein, it will not be enough. That's how great Sayyidina Imam Hussein is. And now I'm going to prove that to you, inshallah. Well, Allah give me tawfiq to speak the truth. Allah give me tawfiq to listen to the truth. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-awwaleen wa al-akhirin, sayyid al-anbiyai wa al-mursaleen, sayyidina wa nabiyina wa maulana muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفقار الحميد يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولا نبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونكس من العمال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم سلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله صلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا شفيع المقدمين Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim after praising Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and sending infinite salutations peace and blessings upon the best of creation the jewel of creation the crown of creation the beloved of Allah Almighty the coolness to our eyes the purpose of our life the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most revered one, the most merciful one, the most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly the most beautiful one. <laughs> None other than Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallam. In the history of Islam, throughout the history of Islam, many revivers have come. Many protectors have come. Many defenders have come. Many lions have come. Many soldiers have come. Many great men and women have come. But very few, if any, are equal to that one who possess the blood of the line of Allah. That one who was the grandson of Rasulullah. That one who in the history of man very few are equal to his maqam and status. Who is that one? It is none other than Sayyiduna Imam Hussein, the son of Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. By the end of this speech, you might think I'm Shia. Maybe it's possible. Because I will talk so much about the Ahlul Bayt, which I shine this year. 
لیکن نو وی ایس اللہ اہل سنتی والجماع مائی رسپنس تو دوز ہو ویل پرابل بی سائم شیعہ is what Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i said. He said, إِنْ كَانَ رَفْدًا حُبُّ عَالِ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَلْيَشْحَدِ الثَّقَلَانِ أَنِّي رَافْزِي Shafi'i رحمت الله عليه said, if living the family of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم makes you a Rafzi. Rawafi. Rafzis are the worst and most extreme type of Shias. Who are they? They are those people who sit and curse Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar. So worse, they swear at them. Ma'ad Allah, they send la'met on them. Ma'ad Allah. Na'ud billahi min zalik. Those individuals who swear at Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyidah Aisha. The mother of the believers, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Those individuals who have no iman in their heart. But are people who say, we love the Prophet's family more than everyone. Nobody loves us, loves the Prophet's family more than us. Imam Shafi lived in a time where the Ahlul Bayt were being persecuted. And he was a deep lover of the Ahlul Bayt. He used to write poem after poem after poem in praise of the Prophet ﷺ's family. Rumors went around he is Shia, he is Hafizi. So he responded, he said, In kana rafdan hubbu ali Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If Living the Prophet Sallallahu's family makes a person a Rafizi, the worst type of Shia, Fal <laughs> Let the heavens and the earth know, let the entire creation of Allah know, Anni Rafizi, that I am a Rafizi. What is he saying? He's saying, living the Ahlul Bayt isn't a dalil of Rafziyyah. Living the Prophet's family isn't proof that that individual is a Rafzi. Living Rasulullah's family is a dalil that you are a Sunni. <laughs> Hating the Prophet as Sahaba is a dalil that you are a Rafzi. If you hate the Prophet's family, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you hate Rasulullah's companions, Companions. If you hate them, then it's a sign that you're a Rafzi. It's not a sign that by you loving the Prophet's family makes you a Rafzi. No. Living the Bili Salaamu Salaam's family is a Dalil of Sunniyat. What's a Dalil of Rafziyat? Hating the Sahaba. A sign of those individuals who are not from the Ahl Sunnah is that they hate the Prophet as companions. They do not like Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Umar, or Uthman. They do not like Sayyidina Hamir Muawiyah. They do not like Sayyidina Aisha. They do not like the companions of the Prophet nor the wife of Rasulullah. So, Imam Shafi is saying, well, According to you, if living the Prophet's family makes a person a Rafizi, then I'm a Rafizi, according to you. But he's saying, I'm telling you, it's not a sign of Rafizi. Imam Shafi'i is Imam Ahl Sunnah. Imam Shafi'i is a mujaddid of his time. Imam Shafi'i is a student of Imam Abu Hanifa's students. Imam Shafi'i is a student of Imam Dar al-Hijra, Imam Malik ibn Anas. Imam Shafi is a leader of one of the biggest madhabs in the world. One of the biggest school of thoughts in the world. You go to Egypt and say, who do you follow? They say Imam Shafi. You go to Tunisia, who do you follow? Imam Shafi. You go around the world, who do you follow? I'm a Shafi. I follow Imam Shafi. 
Rahmatullah. He is Imam of the Ahlul Sunnah. What is he saying? He's saying, if according to you, living the Prophet's family makes you a Rafzi, then I'm a Rafzi. But I'm telling you, I am not a Rafzi. I am a Sunni, I am from the Ahlul Sunnah. Me living Rasulullah Salam's family is a Dalil of Sunni, not Rafzi. It's a Dalil that you're a Sunni if you love the Prophet's family. And you love the Prophet's companions. We live in times of fitna. A sign of the end of times. Today's topic, I'll clear it now. A sign of end of times. You will live in times when fitnas will spread. Tribulations and trials will be everywhere. Knowledge will decrease. Ignorance will increase. People who will come after will disrespect those who came first. Many people today disrespect Imam Abu Hanifa Shafi, Malik Ahmed bin Hanbal, and says, you don't need them. Brother, go to Quran and Sunnah. Brother, go and follow the Quran and Sunnah. You don't need these Imams. <laughs> we don't need these Imams. We don't need no Imams. Are you that great? Are you that learned? Have you reached that level that you can open the Quran and every single ayah of the Quran you can tell us where it was revealed, when it was revealed? Or you are at that stage that you know what was abrogated, what was cancelled and what wasn't? Nasih and Mansur. Do you know Sabah bin Nazul? Brother, forget this. Do you even know Arabic? Tell me, do you know Arabic? No. Says when and why? Why are you making life hard? Why don't you just follow those who made my life, your life very easy? Allah. Why do you have to complicate things? Adinu yusrun. The thing is easy, not hard. It's not husrun. It's yusrun. The religion Islam is easy. These imams came to make mine and your life easy. So follow them. Follow these people. This is why we are those people in fitnas. We live in times of tests. People don't know who to follow, what to follow, what to do. They don't know nothing. It's sad. They don't know what's right, what's wrong. So what happens? They go on Google. They ask Google, Sheikh, tell us. Tell us, what is the problem here? Mulana, tell me. Mulana, Wikipedia. Sheikh, Mulana, Google. Uh, these are who we look up to today. These are who we ask answers to. We don't go to the ulama. We don't ask the ulama, tell us what is right or what is wrong. We don't. We go and type in Google. Google gives us every answer. Google is that mullah that knows everything. Google knows what Shia believe. Google knows what Qadiyani believe. Google knows what Salafi believe. Google knows what Sunni believe. Google knows what everyone believes. Why am I going to go to Mullah Asim or Mullah him or Mullah that? Why am I going to go to these Mullahs when I could go to Google and give me a Google? Go. How do you know if he's telling you right or wrong though? How do you know? Tell me. You don't know. If you've not studied, you'll get misguided. If you don't have a foundation of understanding the deen, you will be misguided. This will become your foundation. What man I met? He said, I'm getting married to Imam Shah. I said, no problem. Very good, mashallah. Says, I want you to study marriage law. I went on Google. I said, Haji, you should have asked him to do your nikah as well. <laughs> if he's telling me everything, you should have said, do my nikah as well. He can't. He's just an information box. And then Google was there. I asked, I write in marriage. First article came up, I read it. Amazing, I was reading the article, reading it, reading it, reading it. So I was reading all of it. I was amazed at what they were saying. At the end, it said, she asked scholar. So I, I read it and I thought, what have I just read? My first article on marriage I'm reading was written by Shia, but I didn't even know. That's why every single person should look where he takes his religion from. Don't take it from no Tom, Dick and Harry. Don't go to anyone who has a beard and a turban and say, yeah, mashallah, he should be a mullah. I'll ask him, no. When you want to take the deen from someone, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, first thing you say, who are your teachers? Who did you study with? Where did you study? Where have you sought your deen from? Who have you taken your deen from? What have you got? Where are your chains? You know, Muhammad ibn Sirin said, Look where you take your religion from. 
Sumulana Rijal. Tell us who your Imams are. Tell us who your scholars are. Name them. You should ask people. First thing, you meet a new scholar, you meet someone who comes. Brother, can I just ask you, who are your Imams? Who do you follow? What are your teachers? And if they are from the Ahlul Sunnah, you take deen from them. And if from the Ahlul Bid'ah, you stay away from them. I'm telling you, it sounds funny. This is how in the time of Muhammad ibn Sirin and Imam Bukhari, they used to do it. Muhaddis would come, they'd say, huh? what's your name? My name is this. Who are your teachers? Who did you study with? Where are your chains? Start narrating. Where have you come from? Everything. Full characterization. They do a character assassination. Jarata, Adin, everything. They don't just say, okay, he's saying this, I'll take the hadith from him. How do you know he's not a notorious liar? How do you know he doesn't understand the hadith? He's just narrating hadith without knowing. It's dangerous, isn't it? It's very dangerous. When you understand the deen, you realize when the deen goes into the hands of ignorant people, then we fall into the times we live in right about now. We are in the most testing times, confused. We don't know who's right, who's wrong. Where the Shia claim, we say, we think they're right. Everyone who reads Kalima, yeah, bro, you read Kalima? <laughs> no problem. They read the Kalima. They read the Kalima on one hand. Then they swear at the ones who understood the Kalima the best, Abu Bakr and Umar. What Kalima is that? Tuf on that Kalima that they read. Yani tuf on those people. Not the Kalima is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we read the same Kalima. But tuf to those who read this. What kind of Kalima is that? Then you swear at Abu Bakr and Umar and then say, I love Allah and his Rasul. I love Allah and his Rasul. Fine, MashaAllah. You love Allah and his Rasul, but you still swear at Abu Bakr and Umar. Rasulullah said, whoever hates Abu Bakr and Umar is a munafiq. Whoever hates Abu Bakr and Umar is a munafiq. Nabi Ali Salatu Salam had so much love for Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar Faru, they are buried next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do you do when you go to Medina Munawwara? Avoid them? Good on you. Good on you that you avoid them. How can you avoid the ones who are buried in the Qadamain Sharifain of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How fortunate are they that they are in the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What use is that kalima? On the other hand, what use is that kalima? You accept the Sahaba, but you curse the Ahlul Bayt. You are against Mula Ali. You are against Sayyidah Fatima. You are against Imam Hassan al Hussein. Ajeeb. What kalima, what use is there in what you are reading? If this is what you believe, then you have another kalima. They read the kalima and they say there's another prophet after Allah. Allah Almighty is Prophet. After Nabi Ali Salam, there's another prophet. Ajeeb. What do you believe in that kalima? Can you accept that individual's kalima? They read the same Quran, same namaz, everything. But there's big differences. Understand, we live in confused times. Everyone seems to be right. Everyone says they're right. Who is right and who is wrong? Right are those who follow the Sahaba. Right are those who follow the four Imams. Right are those who follow the lives of Sayyidi Ala Hazrat. Right are those who follow Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jiran. Right are those who follow Khwaja Mu'inu Din Tishnir Ajmeri. Right are those who follow Dada Ali bin Uthman al Bujwari. Right are those who follow Sultan Bahu Rahmatullah. These people are right. Those who follow Abu Hassan al Shazili. Those who follow Abdullah ibn Alawi al Haddad. Great Imam. Who follow Qadi Yusuf ibn Ismail al Nabhani. These are the right ulama. These are the ulama of Haq. People question me. People think I'm wrong. I, I don't talk like this. It's very rarely that I mention these points. I don't talk like this normally. These are not my subjects. There are experts out there who do these subjects. But we can talk about this as well, no problem. We believe in these things. Do not be confused by these people who chant slogans. We look Imam Hussein, but then in a short print, they curse Abu Bakr and Umar. We look Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar, and in, in small print, they curse Ahlul Bayt. We don't do either of these. What are we? We are lovers of the companions and we are lovers of the family. Together, that is Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. We need to clarify this. People need to know this. We're confused. We don't know. We go to university. Next one says Bukhari, brother Bukhari. I 
and suddenly Bukhara are there. Sad, we don't know what's happening. We don't know how to respond to Bukhari, Muslim, these things. Our youth don't know these things, unfortunately. That's why our youth are leaving our mustak. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's sad. Yes, I focus a lot of my attention on the bad boys. To talk to them on a level about gangsters, etc. So that they can realize and understand there are people out there who talk to us on our level. That's why I do that. But honestly, it's even sadder when our own Muslim youth, our own Sunni brethren, who are brought up in families who believe in Mawlid, who believe in Yarni, who believe in Awliyaullah, who believe in Mizaz and Darwaz, and because of lack of knowledge, they leave. These ones don't know nothing. They're gone. They don't understand the deen. It's very, very sad. Very sad. And that's why it's important. We need to protect our aqaid as well. As we protect our actions. Study the deen. Honestly, go and study the deen with the righteous ulama. Ulama haq and everything will be fine. When we've understood these points, it leads me to another point. Who should we be following? Who are our role models? Our youth today look up to Tony Montana's. Our youth look up to Scarface. Look up to Al Capone. They look up to Al Pacino. They look up to Robert De Niro. They look up to these actors who act like bad boy gangsters. Unfortunately. Our youth look up to those who have fast cars in Fast and Furious 7. Our youth look up to those who are boxing. Those who have money. Those who dress right. Those who chill. Those who know how to go and smoke a pipe of shisha. Those who know how to lick a zuko. Those who know how to go and pick up a tennis bag and shift it. Those people who know what to do on the streets, drugs, alcohol. Those who play music. Those who listen to it. Those who listen to us, gangsters, bad boys, biggies, two packs, 50 cents. This is who they are. Is this who you look up to? Is this who, we are, who Allah said us to follow? Is this what Allah said? You look like them, you have hairstyles like them, you walk like them, you talk like them. What are you going to do on the Day of Judgment? Where's Tupac going to be for you on that day? Tell me. Where's Biggie on that day? Nowhere to be seen. They'll be dragged to the fire of Jahannam. What are you going to follow them? These were the boys you looked up to. These were your role models. This is who you wanted to be like. This is who you used to listen to. Who you used to look at and think, Wow, the man's got a crib. The man's got money. The man's got reputation. man's got respect. man's got cars. Is this who you want to look up to? You want cars? Is this how you get cars? Tell me. Really, on a serious level. Is this who our youth want to follow? Is this what we as Muslims have been left to? To follow those of the West. Those individuals who have no Iman. Who Shaitan has bought their souls. And then they go out to misguide our Muslim youth. We can't blame them entirely. Our Iman has become weak as well. We as Muslims have become weak. We've neglected Fajr in the Masjid. We've neglected Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. We think if I read Juma, I am a Muslim. That keeps me as a Muslim. What about if you miss one namaz intentionally? What's going to happen to you? One namaz. The difference between a believer and a non-believer is his prayer. That's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. The difference between Iman and Kufr is Salah. And yet we neglect our Salah day in and day night. There. We go to the gym till 12 in the morning. One in the morning benching 150 kgs. We're curling 60 kgs. We're there pumping iron after iron after iron. What kind of iron are you pumping? Tell me. What kind of arms do you have? You think you're big with your arms? I tell you who's big. You know these elders who wake up for Fajr, who are weak and old now, yet at the time of Fajr when Allah's, the Azhar is called and the call of Allah comes, the call of prayer comes. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah. As salatu khayru min al comes. These elders wake up and get out of bed. And we, we have so much energy in our arms. We think we're so big, we tense our arms in front of the mirror just to make ourselves feel good. Yeah. Arnold can't touch me. Who's Schwarzenegger to me? Who's Stallone to me? Who's The Rock to me? Who's Hercules to me? Tell me. Their bodies can't touch my body. You think there are 10 men on the street? It's sad, it's true. People said to me, Mom, son, you talk about these things, but you're not raw. You don't have this rawness about you. I said, look, I don't like talking raw to people. But I've seen there's an opportunity to talk raw. So I'm going raw at people right now. I'm not trying to offend you, I'm making you think. Think, just think. 
Is this why Allah created you to waste your life in a gym? Drinking protein powder. You know, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid had no protein. <laughs> Mola Ali had no protein. Yet Mola stood in front of the doors of Khaybar and Khaybar shook. Mullah stands in front of Khaybar. You say the name Ali in Khaybar, it still shakes. Even today it will shake. Sina Ali would go into battle with a flag in his hand. And he'd kill more people on the battlefield than any of the Sahaba. Sina Ali bin Abi Talib, Karim Allah, Ta'ala, Wajal Karim. Shere Khuda, Mushkil Kusha, Shahi Mardan, Shere Yazda, Kuwate Parvardigar. La Fata illa Ali. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, what protein was Sayyidina Ali taking? He was taking the protein of Iman. The one that boosted his Iman. And the Madina to the Ilwa Ali in Babuha. And the city of knowledge, Ali is its door. Rasulullah sent Sayyidina Ali on every expedition. Ali, you go. He was the best soldier in the army of Rasulullah. Nobody can touch Sayyidina Ali in battle. I'm telling you. Mothers will never give birth to the likes of Ali ever again. There's only one Mula Ali radiallahu anhu. I'm telling you. Amount of power Sayyidina Ali had, 14 months trying to lift one door. Hadri! 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 14 months trying lifting one door in Khaybar. Go to Khaybar today. You go to Medina Sleeve, you tell the taxi driver, take me to Khaybar. <coughs> 14 months, try to lift one door of Khaybar, and they struggle. Zahabi records in his Sir Alam al Nubala, the Mullah Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu turned up, with one hand he lifted a door 14 months could not. <laughs> and Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, who married Mullah Kainat radiallahu ta'ala anhu, all night Sayyidina Ali would stand in prayer. He wouldn't miss his prayer. Sayyidina Ali, stature built, strong. My point is, where did Sayyidina Ali get his strength from? Where did that kuwa te parvardigar? That kuwa, that, that strength and power Mullah Ali had? Allah Akbar. It came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala gave us Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu this kuwa, this strength. We look up to the rock. We think Dwayne Johnson has a big body. Aji, I am waiting for the day that we see Sayyidina Ali. So we get to see how great Sayyidina Ali is. Just one didar of Mola radiallahu ta'ala anhu and everything. Honestly. I've read so much about Sayyidina Ali, so much. If only we get to have one ziyarat of Sayyidina Ali, these people of the dunya are not even equal to the dust on the horse of Sayyidina Ali. The hoof of the horse of Sayyidina Ali, they're not even equal to this. Not even, they're not equal to that dust particle, never mind the hoof of the horse that Sayyidina Ali walked upon. These people have no strength, artificial strength. We live in an artificial world. Sisters, all makeup, artificial. Illa mashallah. Brothers, training, artificial. No natural, where's the natural strength gone? Natural strength that you have. There's a strength that you build. You work hard. You go rep after rep after rep. Once you've repped a certain amount, then you stop. Then you do the next, the next, uh, you move on to the next uh, exercise. Like this you go. And they grow and grow, and before you know it, they're gone. But that natural strength, it's still there. You're enhancing your strength with protein and etc., whatever it is. Where's the natural strength gone? These Sahaba, Abu Dujana, Abu Dujana. You know who Abu Dujana is? He's that Sahaba who used to wear a red bandana. He would go into battle with a red bandana on. He would go into battle like this. And he would stand in front of Rasulullah alayhi salam, popping. He says, Ya Rasulullah, just give me permission to go and fight. Allahu Akbar. One Sahabi said, I stood in front of a man that was twice my size. I feared, I thought I'm going to die before him. All of a sudden, I seen one Sahabi jumping with one blow, chopped him into two. 
On the other side, I've seen Abu Dujara was standing there. The warrior of Uhud. Where, where, where the Abu Dujara has gone today? Just because we don't the streets, we think we're bad? No. No. I tell you, when you're bad and you're really good, when you have strong Iman. And that bad doesn't mean bad, it means like bad. You know, the guy's good. Don't mistake my bad for bad. I mean bad meaning, you know, the guy's bad is sick, bro. You know, that's sick. That, that's what I'm That man, you know, who's got a beard, sunnah, strong. The man who's up for fajr, may Allah make us from those men. I like the Quran talks about men. Who are men? Arrijalu. I think it's the No. I am not a hafiz of the Quran. The Hufaz was sat here. Yeah, say yeah. What? Allah says, Rijal, Rijal, who are Rijal, who are men? Men, Allah. Rijal means man. Rajul means man, Rijal means men. Allah said, Rijalun, men are who? La tulhihim tijaratun wa la bayun an zikrillah. Who are men? Allah says, I'll tell you who are men in my book. Men are those individuals. Business, <coughs> business, uh, selling, buying cars, opening businesses, running businesses, making money. Men are those people who those businesses, money, everything they earn, don't distract them from Allah. Now ask yourself, has not money distracted me and you? Have we not? Are we not chasing after the dollar and dime? Are we not chasing after that sterling, that note, 20 pound note, 50 pound crisp pinky note? Of course we are. So where's the manhood gone inside us? Allah says, men are those, nothing distracts them from the zikr. Nothing distracts them. Why? Even when they're doing business, they're doing Allah, Allah, Allah. They're doing zikr. رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنْ إِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ Those individuals who it doesn't even distract them from reading namaz. How many times have we missed namaz to say, well, I'm going to go pick this fair up. Once I've done this fair, then another fair. Before you know it, all the fairs have gone and your fairs has gone. You've got no fairs left. Fair has gone, taxi drivers, I'll read my namaz, no problem, one fair, two fair, before you know it, all fairs have gone. You've picked up, dropped them off, and what's happened? Namaz has gone as well. Your business has distracted you, earning money has distracted you from Allah, has destroyed you from remembering Allah, and reading your salah, and giving zakat. Sadly, this is what's happening to our youth today. The streets have distracted us. We're, not, we're more interested in what's happening on the streets. Then to know about who our role models are, who Sayyidina Ali is, who Sayyidina Imam Hussein is. Who is Imam Hussein? Imam Hussein is the, uh, the son of Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Fatima. Sayyidina Fatima is the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Fatima is the purest woman the earth has ever seen. Hatta the creation of Allah has ever seen. There's no purer woman than Sayyidina Fatima. So pure, Imam Suyuti mentioned his khasais. Women, in their nature, they experience menstrual cycles. We know that. They experience postnatal bleeding after childbirth. Imam Suyuti said, Sayyidah and her was so pure, she didn't even experience one menstrual cycle, no postnatal bleeding as well. She was so pure. Al-Batool, Al-Zahra. Chosen, beloved daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved Sayyidah Fatima so much. They said, Fatima is a part of me. She is from me. 
Whoever harms her has harmed me. Whoever's upset her has upset me. Whoever's angered her has angered me. Allah Akbar. Nabi Ali Salat was Salam said about Sayyidah radiallahu ta'ala anha that she is the leader of the women of paradise. She is the first woman to enter paradise. No woman will enter into the gardens of paradise before Sayyidah radiallahu ta'ala anha. Nabi Ali Salat was Salam Tabrani narrates on the day of Qiyamah, Nabi Ali Salat was Salam said on the day of judgment when the entire creation of Allah will be gathered, my daughter Sayyidah Fatima will come on a camel from Jannah. She will be clothed with the clothing of Jannah. And Allah will say to an angel who will be from behind the arsh and say, make an announcement on Mahshar today. O oh, people on the day of Qiyamah, lower your eyes, lower your gaze. The daughter of Rasulullah is coming. Every single person on Qiyamah, out of respect, will lower their eyes. Ta'zim al ihtiram al Fasayda Tayyiba Tahira Fatima al Zahra, Qadi Allah Ta'ala. Sayyidah Fatima, so pure. Sayyidah Ali, line of Allah. The door to the city of knowledge, the door to the house of wisdom. The one who Rasulullah said, Ali is with the Quran, and the Quran is with Ali. And they will not separate until they meet me on the day of Qiyamah. <laughs> Sayyidina Ali said, there's not a single verse in the Quran that was revealed except I know when it was revealed, where it was revealed, what time it was revealed. Sayyidina Ali said, every single ayat of the Quran, I have ilm of when it was revealed. <laughs> every single ayat. Sayyidina Ali was the only Sahabi who used to stand and say, ask me anything. Ask me anything and I will tell you. So much in Sayyidina Ali had. Because he is the door to the city of knowledge. I'll tell you a beautiful story my Shaykh Ibn Pizala Sahab told me in a public gathering I did on Sayyidina Ali in Bradford. It's reported Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam around Kamo Pesh 24,000 times during their lifetime. 24,000 times Sayyidina Jibreel visited Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Ali said to the people, Jibreel visited me 48,000 times. He said, how? How is it possible? No. The Prophet said before you 48. Mullah radiallahu and said, Sayyidina Ali, can you imagine Sayyidina Ali saying this? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu and says, Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib tarmallahu ta'ala wa shahu kareem said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. Jibreel comes through the door once to go in. Then he comes out of the door to go out twice. 24,000 times in, 48,000 times coming out. They would go in, meet the Ali Salam and they would come past me. And when they go out, then they will go past me. 24,000 times from Nabi Ali Salam, 48,000 times Jibreel used to come to me. And imagine the ilm of Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So much in. Sayyidina Ali said, I would finish the entire Quran when I put my foot into the saddle of my horse. By the time my foot has gone over, I begin Surah Al-Fatiha. How long does it take to get onto a horse? Experts will take a few seconds. Sayyidina Ali said, in a matter of seconds, I will finish the entire Quran. Oh. It's a karamat of Sayyidina Ali, it's his miracle. And you know what Sayyidina Ali used to say? If I was to begin to write the tafsir of the ba in Bismillah, the ba in Bismillah rahman rahim it would take 70 camels just to carry the books of the tafsir of just ba in Bismillah. Mufassirin have written 
hundreds of pages on Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, not on the bar in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And Mawla radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, it would take 70 camels to carry the books of the tafsir that I write just on the bar. Alif, bar, just the bar, letter bar in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imagine the ilm of Sayyidina Ali. رضي الله تعالى عنه وكرم الله تعالى وجهه الكريم الله أكبر. The great Ali bin Abi Talib كرم الله تعالى وجهه الكريم. Marriage سيد فاطمة رضي الله تعالى عنها. Marriage that Allah تعالى told Jibril. Jibril, go and tell my beloved that Ali is to marry فاطمة. أبو بكر الصديق من فادو كيم أن سيد يوسف لا بيبر نريشة. Bin Salam said no. Allah Ta'ala said Jibreel, I said Jibreel, you go tell my beloved, we have decided in the heaven, and it's agreed, written in eternity, that Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha is going to marry Sayyidah Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. Look how pure Sayyidah Fatima is. Do you think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to marry Sayyidah Fatima to anyone? Allahu Akbar. When we get married, my father decides, my mother decides, my auntie decides, my uncle decides, my grandfather, my grandmother. These are all people who arrange our rishta. Then imagine the one who Ghoshi Azam arranges the rishta. Or Khwaja Muhammadin Chishti al arranges the rishta. How great is that rishta? Awliya Allah are arranging the rishta between two people. Yani in the hakikat, Allah Ta'ala has arranged. Here, now, move on. Imagine the Rishta that the Prophet ﷺ arranged. Nabi ﷺ said, you will marry that person. How great was that marriage be? Such as Umm Ayman and Sayyidina Zayd, Ibn al-Haritha, who had a son called Usama bin Zayd. Usama bin Zayd was 18 when he led the Sahaba into battle. The youngest general amongst the Sahaba, Usama ibn Zayd, Sayyidina Usama's mother was Umm Ayman Baraka. Rasulullah said, She is my mother after my mother. Out of respect. The actual mother was Sayyidina Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyidina Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala anha. Nabi said, Who wants to marry a woman from paradise? Sayyidina Zayd said, I'll marry. said, Umm Ayman is a woman from paradise. Go marry her. Who did the Rishta? Nabi Rishti. Now imagine when Allah Ta'ala sends Jibreel and said, Jibreel, you go tell my beloved that we have arranged Sayyidah Fatima's Rishta with Sayyidina Ali Karamullah Ta'ala. Sayyidah Fatima is the most purest woman. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu had in the race, their beloved, their birthplace was near the Kaaba. When they opened their eyes, they seen the Prophet This was Nabi Salaam's cousin brother. Ali you mean me. Wa ana min Ali. Ali is from me. I am from Ali. Man sabba aliyan faqad sabba ni. Whoever swears at Ali has sworn at me. Whoever swore at me has sworn at Allah. Nabi Salaam said, only a mu'min loves Ali. And a munafiq hates Ali. If you want to know somebody who is a true mu'min, you know what to do? Say Sayyidina Ali's name in front of you. See if his face changes color. Or if he smiles. If he smiles, then you know he has iman in his heart. And if he doesn't smile, then he has munafiq inside his heart, nifaq in his heart. <laughs> then you might say, well, those who are extreme lovers of Sayyidina Ali, they smile when they see Sayyidina Ali's name. That's why the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith said, those who love Abu Bakr and Umar, they have Iman. Those who hate Abu Bakr and Umar, they have hypocrisy. So, as soon as he mentions Sayyidina Ali's name, now mention Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar's name. And what will you be left with? It will be our beautiful Ahlu Sunnah faces smiling at both of them, all of them. Why? We love and respect all the Sahaba. 
we love and respect all the Prophet Sallallahu family. Allahu Akbar. When they got married, in the third year of Hijri, Imam Hassan was born. Fourth year of Hijri, Imam Hussein was born. When Imam Hussein was born and Hassan was born, the Prophet Sallallahu read the Azan in the ears. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi read the Azan in the ears of Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Hussein. Tahniq, you know what Tahniq is? It's a, it's a prophetic tradition of putting sweet into the mouth of the child. Tahniq. Tahniq. When a child is born, what do you put sweet into the mouth? People put honey. People put ajwa de, kujur, different things. Some people put sugar. Allahu Akbar. When Imam Hassan and Hussein were born, there was no ajwa. It's from Jannah. No ajwa. There was no honey, asal, nothing. Nabi Salatu Salam took out the blessed saliva, the sweetest thing that ever has been created. And they put it in Imam Hassan and Hussein's mouth. This was the tahniq of Imam Hassan and Hussein. Allah Akbar. And Rasulullah Salatu Salam. So then Ali came and said, I have two boys, I have a boy. What did you name him? What do you want to call him? He said, I want to call him Harbun, Harb. I want to name him warrior, soldier. So then Ali was a warrior himself. Rasulullah said, no. Ali, don't name him Harb, name him Hassan. The next year, Imam Hussein was born. So then Ali came and said, Ya Rasul, I'm going to name him Harbun, Harb, warrior, soldier. Ali said, no. Name him Hussein, the little Hassan, younger brother of Hassan. Allah Akbar. Scholars write, Hassan and Hussein are names from paradise. Nobody before Imam Hassan and Hussein had the name Hassan and Hussein. Nobody had this. They were the first people to have the name Hassan and Hussein. Until Qiyamah, what do we call our children? Hassan and Hussein. How chosen are these names? Accepted are these names? Allah Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Allah, I love both of them. You love them. Love those who love them. Allah Akbar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi had so much love for Imam Hassan and Hussein. So much love. One day they were on the Mimbar Sharif. And they were delivering the sermon. Hassan and Hussein were walking together, two young boys, brothers. Imagine this. The Prophet ﷺ leave their member pulpit during the khutbah. Go and pick Imam Hassan and Hussein. Kiss them, hug them. Come to the member Sharif and say, Innama amwalukum awladukum fitna. Your children and your money are a test. And looked at them and they looked at them and read this ayah of the Quran. Nabi Salatu Salam used to throw them in the air out of love. They used to kiss them. Allah Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had not said that Imam Hassan and Hussein so much, so much, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi said, this son of mine, Hassan, is a Sayyid. He's a leader. Through him, Allah is going to unite two great big groups of Muslims in my Ummah. And Imam Hassan did Salah between Sayyidina Ali Muawiyah and Sayyidina Ali's camps. He reconciled between them. There was a truce made through Sayyidina Imam Hassan. This son of mine is a leader. Allah. And Nabi Salatu Salami. It is reported by Sayyidina Ali. Imam Hassan, from the blessed head to the navel, looked like the Prophet. And Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, from the blessed navel to the feet, looked like Rasulullah Salatu Salami. Sayyidina Ali is saying, when you put the two together, what do you see? The Prophet Sallallahu Hassan and Hussein. Nabi Salaam used to kiss them on their mouth, out of love. Nabi Salaam are leaving the prayer. Is there any prayer greater than the prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu No. Is there any sajda greater than the sajda of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi No. It's not possible. They are the best creation, therefore whatever they do is the best. 
But when they go into sujood, Hassan and Hussein come, and they see their grandfather is in such that, what do they do? They come on top and start playing. Nabi alayhi salatu salam slowly take them off. Next of that, they come back on top and carry on playing. Nabi alayhi salam don't disturb them, believe them. Sajda is gone long now. Allah Akbar. The sajda of Rasulullah in the court of Allah Almighty is long. Because of who? Imam Hassan al Hussein. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we thought maybe Allah Ta'ala has taken your life in Salah. And they said, No, oh my Sahaba, Hassan and Hussein were playing on me. And I didn't want to disturb them. So I let them carry on playing. When they stopped, I carried on myself. How great are Imam Hassan and Hussein? Rasulullah used to say, These two are my aromatic flowers. These are my most fragrant flowers, Rehan. These are my most fragrant flowers. Only beautiful smell, fragrance comes from them. Allah. When it came to Imam Hussein, what did they say? Hussein is from me, and I am from Hussein. is from me, and I am from Hussein. Allah loves the one who loves Hussein. This great Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one day came running into the house of Sayyidah Umar Salama, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Nabi alayhi salatu salam said to Sayyidah Umar Salama, Umar Salama, guard the door, don't let nobody in. An angel was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, and Imam Hussein came running inside. Came and jumped into the laps of Rasulullah Nabi Alayhi Salaam started kissing them, hugging them. The grandson is here. And the angel said, The Messenger of Allah, do you love him? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Bala, of course I love him. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the angel said, Do you know people in your ummah are going to kill him? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started crying. They cried so much. Imam Hussein is in front of them. Imam Hussein is playing with their blessed beard. Imam Hussein is kissing them. Nabi is crying. Angel says, if you want, I'll show you where they're going to kill you. He said, show me, where is it? And he bought back some piece of land. Soil from there. And said, he'll be killed in this land. In another narration, the... Angel said, this land, its name is Karbala. Nabi Salaam said, it's not Karbala, it's Karbun Wabala Karbobala. This is the land of difficulties, this is the land of cash. Nabi Salaam said, my grandson Hussein will be killed in the 60s. Nabi Salaam said, my grandson Sayyidina Imam Hussein will be killed in 60. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu used to make a dua. He used to say, Allahumma la tudritni sana sitin. Oh Allah, don't let me witness the 60s. People used to say to Abu Huraira, why? He never used to tell them why. Afterwards they realized why. Because Abu Huraira knew in the 60s, such a tragedy is going to occur that the Muslim Ummah is going to lose one of its greatest lions, its biggest mountain. The Muslim Ummah is going to lose the grandson of the Prophet So he used to say, Ya Allah, don't let me see the 60s. I don't want to live till then. He passed away in the 59th year of Hijri. Nabiri Salatu Salam Loved Sayyidina Imam Hussain so much. One day they were walking past Sayyidina Fatima's house and Imam Hussain was crying. Nabi Salatu Salam said, Fatima, my daughter, don't let Hussain cry. You know when Hussain cries, when he cries, it hurts me, it upsets me. Don't let me hear Hussain cry. Can you imagine how the Prophet felt on the day of Karbala? When Hazrat Imam Ali Makam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
was killed by the Yazidis. Can you imagine? Allahu Akbar. Imam Hussein of the Allah who lived his entire life preparing for that. Because Islam had now entered into the hands of a man called Yazid. Yazid used to drink alcohol. Yazid used to sleep with women. Yazid used to make halal, haram, haram, halal. Yazid was that individual who did not love the Ahlul Bayt. That individual who used to miss his salah. Yazid was that man who used to eat the people's money. The treasury, the Muslim treasury, he used to eat from there. Do you think Imam Hussein, from amongst the five pure individuals, Panjshan and Pa, do you think Sayyidina Imam Hussein is going to let their grandfather's religion go into the hands of a drunkard? Are they going to let their grandfather's religion to go into the hands of a person who misses his salat, who contradicts the way of the Khulafai Rashidin? No way. It's not possible. Imam Hussein of the Allah Ta'ala Anhu set out from Medina Munawwara to Makkah Mukarram. Long story short, Imam Hussein arrived in Karbala. People say Imam Hussein was after the power. People on TV have said Imam Hussein was, it was a political struggle. Political struggle? If it was a political struggle, then why did they take their daughter Sakina with them? Why did they take their wives with them? Why did they take Sayyidah Zainab with them? Why? <coughs> For a political struggle. If it was a political struggle, then Imam Hussein would have taken Abdullah ibn Abbas with them. They would have taken Jabir ibn Abdullah with them. They would have taken great Sahaba who were alive then said, Come, let's go fight against Yazid's army. No. Imam Hussein is teaching us what? This was no political struggle. There is no political struggle here. There is no power struggle here. Power is in the hands of Imam Hussein. All the power was in Imam Hussein's hand. Imam Hussein didn't need nothing. Yazid needed everything. Yazid knew if I had Imam Hussein, I have everything. But Imam Hussein was never going to give his hand. That's why Khwaja Muhyiddin Chishti Rajmeri radiallahu anh said, Shah Ast Hussein, Baad Shah Ast Hussein. Deen Ast Hussein, Deen Pana Ast Hussein. Sardad Nadad Dast, Dar Dast Yazid, Hakka Ke Bina La Ila Ast Hussein. Sardad Nadad Dast, Dar Dast Yazid, Sayyidina Imam Hussain didn't give his hand to Yazid. Sayyidina Imam Hussain sacrificed his entire life so that Yazid could not be successful in his mission. Imam Hussain sacrificed their life for Islam. If Yazid carried on and nobody stood up against him, today would we be Muslims? We would be drinking as well. We would be doing wrong as well, not saying that we're not doing it now. It shows that Yazidi's traits are here. That's why today's day and age, we need Husseinis. We need men like Sayyidina Imam Hussein. Righteous, upright, pure, perfect men like Sayyidina Imam Hussein of the Allah. And it's impossible to be like that. Let's not go away thinking it's impossible. But what is possible is you can try to be like that. You can try to be like Imam Hussein. You look up to these pop stars and gangsters and footballers in the West. Bring me someone equal to Sayyidina Imam Ali Makam of Allah. There are no comparison. It is, I deem, disrespectful to even put them in the same sentence as Imam Hussein. That's how great Sayyidina Imam Hussein is. Yet today our youth are lost. Our youth are following Rick Ross and 50 Cent. Our youth are following footballers and pop stars. They want to be gangsters. They want to be like Al Capone. They want to be Tony Montanas. They want to be bad boys. Our youth are looking up to these people. Our youth need to look up to the likes of Imam Hussein. And when will they look up to Imam Hussein? When we start talking about Imam Hussein to them. When we have crowds like this and say, boys, 
Don't look up to the people of the dunya. They didn't get nothing. Everything they got was for here. You know who Imam Hassan and Hussein are? They are the Sardars of the Nojawan of Jannah al They are the leaders of the youth of paradise. They will lead men into paradise. Allahu Akbar. Who? Imam Hassan and Hussein, not these people. Adat Imam Ali Makam become Hussein. Make dua, oh Allah, let me be like Sayyidina Imam Hussein. Let me have the sabr of Imam Hussein. We talk about sabr. People say, Imam Sab, I lost my son, I lost this person, I've got so many difficulties. What do we say? Sabr, karo, sabr, karo, sabr, karo. sabr, sabr, sabr. You want to learn about sabr? Look at Imam Hussein. An individual for three days and three nights, water was stopped. No water was allowed to be given to the Ahlul Bayt. Three days and three nights. That individual, Sayyidina Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, on the day of Karbala, sacrificed the 18, 19 year old son, Ali Akbar. You know who Sayyidina Ali Akbar is? They say he was Hamshakli Rasul. He was Hamshakli Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From head to toe, Imam Hussein's eldest son Ali Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu looked like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Sayyidina Ali Akbar went into battle, 19 year old man, fighting 22,000 men, cowards, I say cowards, 22,000 were there, 73 were with Imam Hussein. You think, who's going to win this battle? On the outside, it seems like a defeat. But reality is, victory was Imam Hussein. That's why, Ghalib al-Alama Iqbal said what? Katle Hussein asal mein, marge yazid hai. Islam zinda hota hai, har karbala ke baad. Katle Hussein asal mein, marge yazid hai. When they killed Sayyidina Imam Hussein, this is what the downfall of Yazid was. This is what destroyed Yazid. Islam zinda hota hai har Karbala ke baad. Islam comes to life after every story of Karbala. And in Karbala, don't look at numbers. Don't look at numbers. Don't think 22,000 were there and 73 were here. That means 22,000 were right. No. A measurement of being right isn't the amount of numbers and followers you have. It's true. That doesn't make you right. It does not make you right by the amount of people that follow you. That's not what makes you right. If you say, yes, it does, then Imam Hussein at 73, what are you going to say? They were wrong? No. Right and wrong isn't measured on numbers. Allahu Akbar. Imam Hussein was fighting against falsehood. This was good versus bad. This is haq versus batid. This is right versus wrong. Truth versus falsehood. Sayyidina Imam Hussein is standing for Islam on that day. Ali Akbar radiallahu anh comes in. And they say, Allahu Akbar, all praises to Allah. Salutations be upon my great grandfather Rasulullah. Then they said, do you know who I am? I am the son of Hussein. My grandfather is Ali. My grandmother is Sayyidah Fatima. My grandmother is the leader of the women of paradise. Allah Akbar. My grandfather is the Lion of Allah. Do you know who my great grandfather is? He is the leader of mankind. Do you know who I am? I am the son of Hussein. Ana Ali ibn al Hussein ibn al Ali. Nahnu awlad al Nabi. Nahnu awlad al Nabi. I am Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali. We are the children of the Nabi, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Said Ali radiallahu taala anhu, Ali Akbar. Said who's going to fight me? Nineteen year old standing. Who's going to fight me? Nobody would come forward. Everyone was scared to fight Sayyidina Ali Akbar. He said, you know who I am? I am the grandson of Mola Ali. Fight me then. Allahu Akbar. People stood up. One by one came. He killed them. 
when Hazrat Ali Akbar became thirsty, three days, three nights without water, it was going to take its toll. They came into the tent of the father and said, Oh father, I am thirsty. Oh father, give me one drop of water. Oh father, if you give me one drop of water, I swear that I will annihilate this entire army on my own. Imam Hussein said, My son, where can I get water from you? Where can I get water from for you? Hussein, they have stopped, Ali, they have stopped water from us. And then Sayyidina Imam Hussein of the Allah Ta'ala Anhu put their mouth next to their mouth and put saliva inside and said, quench your face like this and go and fight. Allahu Akbar. Imam Hussein seen the eldest son Ali Akbar die before the eyes, martyred before the eyes, tasting the sweetness of martyrdom before the eyes. Can you imagine a father seeing his own son being killed in front of him? What have we seen? What have we given to Islam? Today we all claim to be defenders of Islam. Today we claim to be protectors of Islam, revivers of Islam. I am doing for Islam. What have we done for Islam? Tell me. Have we made sacrifices like Imam Hussein? Have we given our children in the way of Allah so that Islam could be protected from the battle, hawa that is out there, from this falsehood, winds, storms that are blowing against Ahl Sunnah right now? Is there anyone who has done this sacrifice? Have parents done what Imam Hussein did with Sayyidina Ali Akbar? Then Sayyidina Ali Asghar, six month old child, no water, dying of thirst. When they went out and said, people, you are fighting me. You have a problem with me, you want my blood. My son hasn't done nothing to you. Ali Asghar has done nothing, give him one drop of water and leave him. And there, Harmala, Laeen, curse, curse of Allah be on that man. He took out his arrow and he fired it at Sayyidina Imam Hussein's son. Imam Hussein's son's neck was pierced with this arrow and he said, Go, your son's thirst has been quenched now. He's not going to feel thirst now. Allahu Akbar. Six months old. They were bleeding Imam Ali Asghar radiallahu anhu. In the blessed hands of Imam Hussein, blood was dripping down. Allahu Akbar. And Imam Hussein said, Ya Allah, Ibrahim, gave a qurbani of Ismail and Ibrahim salam was blindfolded. Ibrahim salam was about to sacrifice Ismail and you replaced Ismail with a ram for those in paradise. Oh Allah, be witness today, be witness today that they have killed my son Ali Asghar. Oh Allah, be witness today that I have fulfilled the sunnah of Ibrahim salam. I wasn't blindfolded, I seen my son die in front of my eyes. Oh Allah, I have seen my grandson die. My son died before my eyes. Oh Allah, I did what Ibrahim alayhi salam did at home. Allah Akbar. Hazrat Imam Ali Makam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. There's a brother in the number plate, just such. There's no need to read out the number plate. It said just such, number plate. So if just Saj can, please move his car. Hazrat Imam Ali Makam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allahu Akbar. Sacrificed the children's lives. For who? For what? For Islam. Islam jinda hota hai har Karbala. You've got to give the sacrifices of Karbala to revive Islam. To be a reviver of Islam. Till then, what are you? You're nothing. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali Makam seen the nephews, Imam Qasim. Seen the nephews, Imam Abdullah. Imam Muhammad and all the sons of Sayyidina Zainab and Abdullah bin Ja'far al Tayyar. All being martyred before their eyes. Imam Hussein would go out and put their bodies into the tent. Hazrat Imam Ali Makam is 57 years old. And their time has come now. Allah Akbar, history will never bring forth a soldier like Imam Hussein. <coughs> this was the son of Sayyidina Ali. This was the son of the Lion of Allah. Imam Hussein, one last time in brief, met their family. I'm doing it in brief. Met their family. Their sister Sayyidina Zainab, their daughter Sayyidina Sakina. Young daughter, young girl. Met them all and went out. Hazrat Imam Ali Makam went into the plains of Karbala. 
Allah Akbar, the khutbah Imam Ali Makam gave. Said, all praises to Allah Almighty, salutations be on my grandfather. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People, do you know who I am? I am Hussein, the son of Ali. Do you know who my mother is? She is the leader of the women of Paradise. Do you know who my father is? My father is the line of Allah. Do you know who my grandfather is? He is the best of creation. In my house, the Quran was revealed. Jibreel used to come and visit us. Allah Ta'ala said about me and my brother, we are the leaders of the youth of paradise. Come, after doing a lengthy khutbah, come fight me, who dares to fight? Nobody wanted to fight Imam Hussein. It's reported 88 enemy soldiers were killed on the sword of Sayyidina Imam Hussein and sent to Jahannam. Look, those people can't be right and Imam Hussein can't be right. Only one person can be right. And no doubt, Haq is with Imam Hussein and Allah Ta'ala. Imam Hussein was only right on that day. They weren't right. They were wrong. They were forcing something on the grandson of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 88 people were sent to the hellfire on his soul. It's narrated 120 wounds arrows and swords were in the jism of Imam al -Makam. 121 said there was one arrow in the heart of Imam Hussein. It's narrated Sayyidina Imam Hussein when they fell from their horse, they fell in the position of sujood. It was there that Shimar ibn Zid Joshin and Laeem went and chopped Imam Hussein's head. Allah Akbar Imam Hussein's blessed head was chopped off. Imam Hussein of the Allah Ta'ala Anu head was put on a spear. Hazrat Imam Ali Maqam gave the ultimate sacrifices. Not only did they give their own life, but they gave their children's life. The ultimate sacrifice, they left all their family, everything. For what? For what care? For what reason? For what mission? Islam. If I was to stop here right now, I'd leave you with one question. What have we done for this kalima la ilaha illallah? What have me and you done for Islam? Have we made anyone Muslim in our lifetime? Have we even helped ourselves, never mind others? What have we done for our deen? Young people, what are we doing? What are we doing for our deen? Think about it. Yet we boast so much. I am Muslim. I am Muslim. Our religion is the best religion. Our prophet is the best prophet. Our Quran is the best Quran. Yet you don't follow your prophet. You don't read the Quran, and you're a part-time Muslim. Illa mashaAllah, not everyone. But that's the reality. That's what we are becoming. We need to revive the mission of Sayyidina Imam Hussein. We need to go and spread the mission of Imam Hussein to every corner of the UK. Every corner of the world, we need to spread the mission of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein was a mountain of patience. Imam Hussein was an ocean of virtue. Imam Hussein was an individual who accepted the will of Allah. And Imam Hussein gave every single thing up for what, for who? For the religion of Rasulullah. <laughs> Brothers, forget looking up to the people of the dunya. Look up to the leader of paradise. Aspire to be like him. Go to sleep dreaming and wanting to see Imam Hussein. Wake up praying, let me be like Imam Hussein. We need Husseinis today, that's what we need. We need young men who follow in the footsteps of Imam Hussein. Not those who following the people of the dunya. Look, every single one of you has Iman in your heart. Every one of you knows what's right and wrong. Again, we're asleep. That's all it is. We just need to wake up. Wake up and realize this world is part-time. Brother, 
I'll tell you, there were two boys, 17 and 18 year olds in Bradford, who were driving a car at 17 miles per hour on Manningham Lane, and they died. 18 year old boys. Can you imagine how their mother feels? The father feels. 18 years old is nothing. Died. Racing in a car. Speeding in a car. In a zone 30 mile per hour zone. How many of our youth in Warsaw and Wolverhampton, Birmingham do the very same thing? And think, oh, it's an S3, it's all right. The car will save me. These cars are designed to save you. But if you don't know how to manage them, they can also kill you. Why? Why waste your life? Chasing after the dunya, money, women, these things. What are they going to give us? Tell me. What are we going to get at the end of it? Do we take it to our graves? If we could take it to the grave, then I can accept the Yaman. Let's make money. But it's not going to take us to, it's not going to go into our graves with us. So why are we chasing after the dunya so much? When are we going to make time for Allah? When are we going to make time for the Prophet Sallallahu When are we going to make time for Salah? Or what? Are we too busy? <coughs> Bro, you got no time. Mom said, no time. I'm too busy, mom. Too busy, mom. What, what do you do that you're so busy? What are you doing? You work 9 to 5? What about the rest? Why oh, I got family, this, that. Look, many Buzurgs here have families. They used to work. They didn't miss the namaz. They still read the namaz. Oh, Ya Allah, have everything. They still read the namaz. There is no excuse for us to miss our prayers, brother. Imam Hussein did not miss a prayer. Even Fajr, the last Fajr they performed on Karbala, they had no water to do with. Because they stopped water. They did Tayammum. They did Tayammum and they performed Salah. In one narration, it's narrated Imam Hussein of the Allah Ta'ala Anhu. What did they do? When they fell from the horse, they said, let me do one more sajda. It was in sujood that the cowards killed Imam Hussein. Why? He said, I don't want to miss my prayer. One more time, the sweetness of sujood. And how many sajdas have me and you missed? Me included. I'm not perfect. I'm not sitting here telling you that I've, I pray, prayed every salah. I miss salah as well. A human. It doesn't, I don't care if I lose value in your eyes. What is it? It's in the eyes of, it's in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, metaphorically speaking. It's in front of Allah that we should be worried, not in front of people. How many have me and you missed sujood? Yet we say, we love Imam Hussein, we love the Prophet, we love the Quran. Somebody attacks our religion, we all go out and march. When are we going to march against our own souls, our own nafs? Gosh, if only we could go out and march against our nafs, then we'd be true men. But we're too worried about everyone else. What others are doing, worried about yourself. Who anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Allah in the Quran said, protect yourself and your children from the fire. Don't worry about everything else. And today we need to really protect our Iman. The end of times are near. When is it? Allah knows best. But the signs are close. When you see the signs, then you know it's near. And what are the signs? Knowledge will decrease. Ignorance will increase. Alcohol will be drunk. Fornication will be widespread. For every man there will be 50 women. You've not got to that state, it's getting there. <coughs> Nabi Ali Salam said men are going to be wearing gold and silk. Women will dress like men, men will dress like women. Isn't this happening today? Women look like men, men look like women. We have this in our communities today. Rasulullah said towards the end of time, so many things will appear, so many signs will appear, and they are appealing. We live in these times. Don't become a sign. Don't be part of those signs. Be opposite to that. Become an example of people of Allah. That when people see you, they, see, they remember Allah. They see the signs of Allah. They, get, they feel close to Allah when they remember you, when they see you. This is who we should become. And it's not hard. Trust me, every saint had a past and every sinner has a future. Bishr Hafi used to drink. He used to drink and drink. Everyone knows I talk about Bishr all the time. Bishr Hafi used to drink all night, drink, drink, drink. 
One morning he woke up, he was walking home drunk, drunk, and he seen a piece of paper with Bismillah Rahman Rahim written on it. He picked it up and in his drunkenness he said, This paper shouldn't be on the ground. Allah's name is disrespectful. He went home, he cleaned it, put it on a high place. When he went to sleep, he had a dream. In his dream, a voice came, Bishar, Bishar, you pick my name up, clean it and put it high. We have lifted your name. Clean it and you will be remembered to the end. He changed overnight, <coughs> flipped. There are many brothers who have a past. I have a past. We are not perfect. We are, we are humans. Every saint had a past. Not every. Illa masha Allah. We can't do a kulli here. Juzi. Every year, not meaning every single saint. People like Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, they were born mahfuz. Allah protected them from even child. So not every. So if you were to rephrase that, most, if not majority saints, saints, they have pasts. And sinners have futures. Don't despair in the mercy of Allah. You've got a chance, brother. You've got a chance. Don't worry. Allah Ta'ala gives us a chance every morning when we wake up. It's not, it's not late, it's not too late. But don't use this excuse, I don't worry Imam so when I get old, then it might be late. How do you know? Did young Akil know he was going to the gym and Allah was going to take his soul? He didn't know, nobody told him. So we don't know, death will come any time, any single time. Click of a finger, boom, you're gone. Before you know it, people will be remembering you in the masjid again. Let's not waste our life. Let's spend our time remembering Allah is Rasul, following the right role models. We live in the end of times. And the sign of the end of times, people will forget the early people. And sadly, people are starting to forget Imam Hussein. Our young youngsters don't know Imam Hussein of Allah. Imam Hussein passed away on Friday, the 10th of Muharram, in the 61st year of Hijri, in Karbala, aged 57 years old. Know this. So every year when Muharram comes, now you know why. Why do people go to the masjid in Muharram al Haram to remember Imam Hussein? To remember his story, the success he achieved. And this is very important for us to revive. The society of the Day of Judgment is people who will come after, they will forget who came first. Let's not be those people who forget. Let's be those people who remember and remind. Let's become those people who remember and remind. And trust me, when you become a lover of Imam Hussein and Sayyidina Ali, when you, I'm going to finish right now, one minute, my last point. When the Sayyidina Ali, when you become a lover of the Ahlul Bayt and the Sahaba, then there is karam upon karam in your life. I'm telling you, I promise you. Because you loving the Prophet's family and his companions, in reality is because you love Rasulullah Sallallahu and those who love Rasulullah salam, Allah Ta'ala loves them. And when Allah Ta'ala loves them, then Allah Ta'ala gives them what they want as well. So become lovers of the Ahlul Bayt and of the Prophet Sallallahu companions. Don't be anything otherwise. Be lovers of Rasulullah salam, be lovers of Allah's friends. Be lovers of the great righteous ulama. And follow them and take your deen from them as well. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive me for any slip of the tongue and mistake that I made. That mistake is for me and I retract if anything I have said is wrong. I make that very clear in front of everyone. And if anything good has come, oh Allah, it's not from me. It's come from you. It's come from you and your Prophet And it's come from Sayyidina Imam Hussein and Sayyidina Ali. And Sayyidina Fatima, the Ahlul Bayt and the Ashab of Rasulullah It's come from my parents' du'as. And it's come from my teacher's guidance and teaching. I make dua that Allah Ta'ala blesses each and every one of you. Allah Almighty elevate the darajat and ranks of young brother Akil in Jannah al Firdaus. Allah forgive him for all his sins. Amen. Enter him into paradise with the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, today these young boys have gathered to remember him and to remember Imam Hussein and to remember those who gave their life to, for Islam. Allah, we ask you through the wasila of the Prophet Sallallahu forgive each and every one of us. Wallah, anyone who is ill, give them shifa ikam. Wallah, anyone who has passed away in our families, grant them a place in Jannah. Wa aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah. Wa lakum. Wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah.